Well, it's five weeks into our Jesus Speak study, and uh, JK and I just want to remind you to keep going with us on this. It's, it's so easy to kind of let up. You now we've got halfway through. Keep going because Jesus has so much more to say to us, and today he's going to speak to us loudly to the city of Sardis, the church there, and telling us to wake up. Have you ever missed a wake up call? Uh, several years ago, Sarah and I were with a group from our church. We were on our way down to Haiti, overnighting in Fort Lauderdale, and we had a really early uh, wake up call to get to the airport to fly into Haiti. And uh, I don't know what the, what the deal was, my phone, the time change, whatever it was, we missed the wake up call, the alarm didn't go off. And we only had five minutes to get all of our stuff together, get on the shuttle and get to the airport. It's one of those moments where you just feel like you're out of sorts and you, you're just really out of control and you're a little bit tired and shocked. Here's the deal, sometimes that happens in your spiritual life. You miss a wake up call. Well today Jesus is going to speak to the city in Sardis about waking up. But before we get to the study, JK is going to set us up and talk to us about that city. Hard to know exactly what Sardis means. Some commentators say it means the escaping ones. Some say it means a Prince of Peace. Regardless, it was an important city, home of Aesop and his famous fables, and also the home of someone called Mileto, a mid to early second century writer, perhaps the first Christian to write a commentary on Revelation. Like Pergamum, this early city was located on a 1500 foot Acropolis, easy to feel safe and secure in a place like that. Sardis was also the home of the largest Jewish synagogue outside of Israel, a massive building, 400 feet long, 60 feet wide, right next to a Roman gymnasium where athletes competed in the nude. Easy to get lulled into a spiritual slumber in a place like that. So here's a city filled with Roman paganism, numerous gods and goddesses set right next to a Jewish synagogue with all kinds of cultural symbols. And in this place, a church is located only a generation or two old. And Jesus in Revelation chapter three, verse two says, wake up. In verse three of that same chapter, he says, I'll come like a thief. Easy to forget urgency. So let me set up Mike's teaching with this important question. Do I live as an alert Jesus follower or am I spiritually asleep? Well, in this letter to the church at Sardis, uh, Jesus begins like he does most of the letters. He says, here's what I know about you. He knows their works. And he knows that they have a reputation of being alive, but being dead. I want to talk about that for just a moment because it's really interesting. If you look at this, at this church, you go, it's possible to look like you're really living the Christian life. You have a reputation for being a follower of Jesus Christ, but you're really not, in, in, at least in Jesus' sight. And, and it's just something for us to be challenged with here at the very beginning to think about, is it, is it true that maybe you and I, we go to church and we, we give an offering, we serve, we sing songs, we do Christian things, we're in a small group, but in reality, um, we're just kind of, that's a reputation we have. We're really not living it the way that we should. In fact, that's what Jesus says here. He says, here's the compromise, is that you've kind of fallen asleep. Everything in your spiritual life has become routine. That's why he gives them this simple uh, exclamation in verse two, wake up and strengthen what remains. You know, here's the problem with us in our spiritual lives and maybe what was going on in Sardis is that they were just kind of sleepwalking by faith. Um, and that happens sometimes as you grow in your faith and you get older in your faith because of the routine. Now, routine can be a very good thing. In fact, we do routines for a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of our life activities. Uh, one of those things is working out. And uh, you can't really tell it all the time, but I like to work out, I like to run, I try to keep a regular exercise regimen. Um, but here's what I found in my own routine is that after a while, I just get up and go through the motions. I may be lifting weights, but really not pushing it that hard, really not trying to grow or to get better. And you know what? Sometimes the spiritual life is like that. It can happen not just in workout routines or being physical. It can happen at work. You just get up every morning, same cup of coffee, same emails. You just go through the routines of meetings. It's just routine. It can happen in school if you're a student. You just get up every day and you do the same routine week after week after week. Well, here's the deal. Jesus is saying to this church in, in Sardis, hey, break out of your spiritual routine. I want you to grow here. 
and he uses this exclamation, wake up. I want you to wake up. It's like you're asleep in your faith. You have a reputation. And again, I don't know if it's a reputation with other churches, well, maybe their own self-impression that they're doing pretty good. But Jesus says the reputation is not true. You guys really are dead in your faith. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to wake up. Now, it's interesting because um, if we can become routine in our workout and we routine at work and routine at school and all of life, then we can become routine in spirituality. In fact, if you look at the Old Testament, one of my favorite books in the Old Testament, Malachi, uh, there at the end of the Old Testament, it appears that the priests, the Levites, the ones that had been selected by God as the tribe that would serve in the temple, it appears that they had become just weary of doing the work of God in the temple. Can you imagine this? They were the ones who got to lead people in worship. They were the ones who got to sacrifice and help people with their relationship with God. But they got to a place near the end of this temple um, uh, function that they were just tired of it. And they sniffed at the incense and they were just went through all of the stuff, going through the motions. And God says, you know what? I wish you'd just shut my temple doors because I don't want you to go through the motions. I really want you to be followers of mine. I want you to wake up. I think he would have said the same thing to those priests in the Old Testament. Wake up, as he said to this church here in Sardis. By the way, this, this encouragement to stay awake in your faith occurs several times through the New Testament. Um, one time we know for sure is 1 Peter 5, 8, where, where, where Paul just kind of, or Peter kind of says, listen, I want you to stay awake and stay alert because the devil is prowling around seeking whom he may devour. And so we have this idea of we should be awake so we're aware of how Satan's trying to tempt us and we can keep from the sins that he's trying to draw us into. But there's another kind of awareness that Jesus speaks of over and over again, specifically in Matthew 24 and verse 42. He says, stay awake for you do not know the hour when the Son of Man is going to come back. There's this re realization for us as Christians that Jesus is coming back someday. And that means that today, as routine as it is, could be the day that Jesus returns and that should cause us to live differently. And so what I'm gonna challenge you to do in your small group and individually is to work on some of these routines that maybe become a rut for you. Again, these are routines that are gonna help you get out of the routine you're in and you're gonna to have to get out of these routines at some point too because that's just the reality of keeping our faith alive keeping it awake and, and alert. So let me give you some things that will maybe help you strengthen what remains of your faith and change some of the routines. First of all, I would encourage you to change the way that you pray. One of the easiest ways I've found to do this over the years is through a prayer journal. A prayer journal can be anything from a list of prayer requests in, a, anything from a spiral notebook to a really fancy leather bound journal, or it can just be a letter. You know what I've really found helpful in my spiritual walk is just to start writing a letter, Dear God, and just write to him about the stuff that I would write about in life, tell him my concerns, all the things that are going on with my family. And at the end, just love you, Mike, or love always, or however you want to sign that letter off. It's just a way to get past those routines of, dear God, thank you for this food. Dear God, thank you for this day. Bless us as we sleep. Or dear God, thanks for this new morning. We have a tendency to have a routine with prayer. Break that up perhaps with a prayer journal. Maybe that would be helpful to you. Another way that you can kind of change your routine spiritually is to fast from something. Now, all, all through the New Testament, the fasting in Old Testament was, was from food, staying away from food. But there are so many things that can distract us from being aware of the spiritual. Again, I want to encourage you, maybe it's television, maybe it's sporting events, maybe it's some hobby that you have. And you're saying to the Lord, for 30 days, for 10 days, for one week, I'm going to give something up so I can be more aware of my relationship with Jesus Christ. Sometimes getting out of those routine things will wake up um, your faith in Jesus Christ. Um, another thing is a short-term missions trip. And, uh, and I just encourage you to get out of your comfort zone, to go to a foreign country or another place where you're out of, you're out of control and you just get to see what God is doing in a worldwide sense. Uh, a short-term mission trip can be a real way to reawaken faith in your soul. Um, serve differently. You know, all of us kind of have a tendency to find our place in the body because of our giftedness, because of what we do, because of what we've done. Some of us have served in the same thing for 15 plus years. And so guess what? It's a routine. Maybe a good thing for you to do would go to somebody on your church staff and say, hey, I'd like to serve in a different area. Just do it for a month. Just do it for three or four weeks. And that serving differently will show you a different aspect of God's working in your life. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you should just challenge yourself to give more. 
You know, uh, again, money is so important to us in our culture. When we, when we find ourselves practicing giving more, then it says to God, God, I want to be invested in your kingdom. I want to be about what you're doing. Sometimes it can waken up your soul because you're invested more in what God is doing. Finally, let me just rem remind you and, and uh, encourage you to do this. Reading Christian books is a great way to awaken your faith. Reading the stories of other people, or the perspectives of other people who are walking with Christ will sometimes give you a new perspective on the same old story that you love so much. So maybe uh, you will challenge each other uh, together as a group or maybe individually one of those things or maybe something else and you can say, hey, I really want to grow and wake up my faith. Maybe one of those practices will help you. Well, let's get to this conquering bit because in each of these, remember, Jesus comes to the finish line. Here's the nikao, the victory, the overcoming, the conquering. And he says, if you conquer, here's the deal, you're going to be clothed in white. I'm going to clothe you in white. And um, I'm going to stick with that imagery because that imagery is so important throughout the book of Revelation. The clothing in white symbolizes that God has washed us clean from our sins and we are dressed appropriately as for a wedding feast or a wedding feast of a king. Even in this passage, he says, there are some of you who have not soiled your garments and so you get the idea that sin soils our garments, makes us unclean. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we are washed clean and we are in robes, white robes, where we get to be with Him forever. That's the finish line. Wake your faith up so that you can wear the white robe of forgiveness and grace. Listen, I, I, I'm, I couldn't help reading this story without thinking of another time where people who were Christians and followers of Christ fell asleep. The Garden of Gethsemane, the apostles were there, and uh, Jesus was getting ready to face his, his most trying time as a human. He was going to be betrayed and he was going to be crucified the next day. And he asked three of his disciples, uh, Peter, James, and John, would you stay here and pray? And three times he comes back to them. And you remember, he had they, they had fallen asleep while Jesus was asking them to pray. I wonder often um, if, if Peter and James and John knew what was happening on that night. If they went back, if they would have prayed more earnestly knowing that there's something, something awesome that's getting ready to happen that's going to change the world and save the world from their sins. Would they have prayed differently had they known this was the last time they were going to see their Lord alive? Maybe that's the same for us. Um, maybe this is the last day. Maybe this is the great work that God is doing in our lives and we need to awaken our souls to be alert to that so He can use us in a powerful way. Here's what I know. Someday we're going to be with Him because we wake up our souls and I'm so blessed that the Lord did not sleep. He stayed awake so that He could save us from our sins.